All right, guys, welcome to Real Talk. Thank you for joining us on Friday. We love being with you. Real Talk, the insider's guide to real estate across Charlottesville, Albemarle County, and Central Virginia. It's powered by the Yes Team. If you need any kind of um, help, buying or selling a home, the Yes Team, powered by Keith and Yona Smith, your answers, your solutions across the Commonwealth and Central Virginia. Um, Harris Tolber, our director, Judah Wickhauer, our producer, special guest Bill Tucker in the mix today. We're going to have some fun with him. Harris Tolber, why don't you go to the studio cam and welcome our guest to the show, this fine gentleman right here you see is Keith Smith. How you doing, Keith? I'm doing well. Um, this fine gentleman, Bill Tucker. Hello, Bill. How are you doing? Glad um, to be here. We're doing well. We're glad to spotlight you. You, my friend, set up this show, set up this interview. Why don't you give us a teaser to Bill Tucker that you know before we go to the man himself? Well, um, my wife and I have been working with Bill for, I think, apparently decades. Not really sure, <laughs> but um, uh, helping us with our transactions going from close to, uh, excuse me, from contract to close, um, you know, and I've said this before on air, if, if you know, uh, if you want to get something done, that's the gentleman to hire, but the real reason I'm here and I'm excited about having here is to talk about Woodstock, because <laughs> he was there. Apparently, we're going to talk about Willie Mays, because we're both huge fans of Willie Mays, and then a little bit of kosher food, because I'm a huge fan of anything kosher, so... I love the show is going to go in kind of a lot of directions. A lot of directions. I love it. All right, so Bill, the first sizzle reel waiting to happen right here. Harris Tolber, a sizzle reel is an approachable shorter clip from the show. The first one is dedicated to you. Bill Tucker is the co-founder of Charlottesville Settlement Company. Mm -hmm. Bill Tucker is the founder of Tucker Griffin Barnes, his namesake on his shirt right there. Um, before we get into the resume and the professional, how about Bill Tucker, the man, the personal aspects that make you tick, Bill? Well, I, I enjoy family. Uh, have a wonderful wife, uh, three wonderful children, three grandchildren. Matter of fact, I've got five, the five-year-old twins are going to be spending a week with us, so I plan to go sleepless. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me throw this to you. Um, hobbies, passions, interests, what you love about Charlottesville and Central Virginia? Uh, you know, it, it, Charlottesville, it, it used to be that you knew everybody in Charlottesville. I remember we'd get on the plane at the airport, and it'd be the little cigar plane with seats, just one seat on each side. And you would know out of the 30 people, maybe four of them, five. Now, it's amazing. You don't know anybody. And it's a f you know, four, four across on the rows. Uh, but it's still a great place to live, grow up, uh, always relaxed here. Uh, and uh, enjoy, enjoy being able to still exercise. We love talking about real estate, entrepreneurship. We love seeing how business has grown. Mm -hmm. How about the flip book? of um, Tucker Griffin Barnes or the flip book of Charlottesville Settlement Company, how you started, trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. and to this point. Sure. Uh, I came to law school here in 1968. I actually had never been to Charlottesville, didn't even get up here for an interview, just got accepted with, without knowing what I was getting into. And when I graduated in 71, I like to tell people I lost my plane ticket, and I ended up staying. I'd always intended to go back to Florida, where I'm from, and uh, but ended up staying and, and just loved it from the day the day I started uh, practicing, doing my own thing. I'm kind of like you, Jerry. I was an entrepreneur initially, didn't practice law right away, developed some real estate, and just just had a good time. Still have a good time. I love it. I love it. I've never seen a, a, a not that on his face, a smile. Never seen it. No matter how things are going sideways, he's always got a smile on his face, always a positive attitude. He never makes it about him. He makes it about trying to get the deal done. And that's one of the things we, Yona and I, appreciate the most. But I just wrote a note. So I was six years old when you graduated. Oh. <laughs> and normally I'm the old dude on the site, on the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I feel a little better about that. Young right? in spirit. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I feel like, Bill, you epitomize when you make your passion your profession. You don't work a day in your life. Oh, yeah. um, you came into the, the studio and you had this positive vibe about you. Like me, you were wearing sandals. Uh, like me, you're a casual guy. Mm -hmm. um, I think Charlottesville really embraces, embodies that mindset in a lot of the ways. Mm -hmm. If you get the job done and you get the job done right, it doesn't matter if you're wearing sandals or not. That's Throw right. that to yeah, you, Oh, Bill. absolutely. <laughs> and, and before I, I start, I want to make sure that Keith understands you didn't ask how old I was when I graduated. Maybe I was only six. 
Okay. <laughs> so I'm wearing shoes and socks because apparently it's getting a little deep around here. Yeah. <laughs> Wendell yeah. Gibson watching the program. Hey, Wendell. The builder. We yeah. got some questions already. Uh, cool. Ray Cadell says, that's one world-class attorney you have there and an even better human being. You well, can't no. imagine the gifts he has given this community. Also, I always say there are two kinds of attorneys, deal makers and deal breakers. He is the ultimate deal maker. Uh, Throw that to you. Well, we, you know, we have a model in our firm, uh, you know, there are going to be plenty of problems with real estate transactions, and, and rather than blame anybody, our motto is let's just fix it. You know, we solve problems, uh, and I've always enjoyed doing that, still do. Just, just you know, it, it's every day there's a new problem or f several problems that come up, and got to well, figure out a way to fix it. We won't talk about age, because apparently he was six when he graduated. <laughs> yeah, I might have been a little older. A little older than that. Um, <laughs> that's the first sizzle reel. Cut it right there. Keith Smith, jump in here, baby. Yeah, no, it's just the kind of that get it done attitude can do. You know, um, you know, there's very few people in Bill's line of work in this town. Not that there isn't any. There's several. But, you know, you can pick up the phone and call a cell phone on a Sunday, which we don't, we don't, um, you know, we need to talk to Bill. We need to talk to Bill. We just don't call him for a, a silly reason. Uh, but he'll answer the phone, and he'll brainstorm a problem with you. And and I, I'll tell you, of the many, 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 many transactions we do, I've never had one that we couldn't fix. So and it's, lot, it's because of his. I Not, love it. And Yona, of course. Well, you guys help, too. Yona, totally <laughs> Yona. Not me. So one of the ideas that Keith had for the show, and it's great, is um, kind of uh, demystifying or making the home buying and selling mm -hmm. um, process more approachable and more understandable. Um, a lot of folks, and, and you know, there's a stigma out there that it's one of the most complicated and emotional roller coaster ride, and it, it embodies a lot of those qualities. But mm -hmm. when we have professionals like you and the Yes team, much easier. Um, you jump in here, Keith, uh, and how you have seen Bill and his businesses kind of make it more simple. So, uh, and Bill may Bill may um, agree or disagree with me, and and I don't know if this is a lot. Some of it is to do that we've been in the business for a long time. But it just seems to me every transaction now is getting a little bit more complicated. Um, you know, I'm not so sure we would be seeing the things that we're seeing now, maybe 10 years ago, even five years oh, ago. Absolutely, yep. Um, and there, there are far more moving parts than it used to be. I was thinking on the way, way in this morning, um, now, this is on the development side, so as everybody who watches the show, they know I'm a recovering developer and builder. But, um, you know, I, there's a project just got approved in Fulvana County called Colonial Circle. It took four years to get, get approved. My first large subdivision I did in the, at Lake Monticello called the Acres. From the time I put a contract in on it, went through all the processes and put a bulldozer on the job, it took me six months. <laughs> and uh, I know. Uh, but transactions are becoming much more difficult and you need to have an expert on the other side that doesn't hit a roadblock uh, on it and you know to my my uh, experience has been it's the communication right and, and I, I'm trying to fumble for a path on how to answer that question a uh -huh. little bit but um, so I, I don't know what Bill's experiencing in the last couple of years but it, it seems to us that you really need to bring a team member on to kind of navigate through this. So. I feel like this is the second sizzle reel, starting with Keith's perspective here. You jump in. First, well, I, want to, I want to know why it's more complicated. Yeah. Well, it, it is, and Keith's exactly right. You, you'll be amazed, just little issues become big issues. You would think, uh, I've deal, tell you what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, couple selling, they uh, were out of the country, they've got to get a notary signed, a notary signature to a power of attorney so somebody can sign their documents. Uh, they go into an embassy, which is hard as heck to do, make an appointment. Unfortunately, they decided to use their own power of attorney. If it's not good enough, they should have had us prepare it. So. Second choice was there's something called e-notaries. There's all this e-signature stuff going on, which I am personally against. But there is a, a system that's set up, and Virginia recognizes it, where you can have an e-notary. You're supposed to video the signing and keep it for five years. Well, our client did an e-notary from Korea, I believe, uh, with a company out of Texas. 
we then send in the documentation. The clerk says, reluctantly, I'll accept that notary. Uh, the title company says, well, wait a minute. You need to use a Virginia e-notary company, not a Texas e-notary company. So, you know, who knew that? But, but that's the kind of stuff that just goes on that we would think real simple. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's just the, the, the level of steps that one needs to go through right now. And, you know, the regulators on the loan side changes periodically. You have the issue Bill just was talking about on the e-notary. You know, you know, when we talk about this demystification and simplification of it, you know, at the end of the day, it's a complicated transaction, right? There's and so many it, moving parts. That's exactly right, yeah. So where the key is, um, is um, to hire a trusted advisor. Bill would be that, the owner and I, I would think, would also fit that, fit that mode, but there's plenty of real estate agents, which I'm sure are watching, that are, can also be um, a, a trusted advisors, but it, it's just a, a simple path, and I think we, we put a couple of paths to buying and selling we can put it on there. Yeah, Harris will cue those up. Good, thank you. So I'm just curious. Yeah, you said a couple of questions. I'm just wondering what they may be, and there may be some stuff that we can throw Bill's way. Or... Well, I, I'm, this is one question that's come in: is how has the internet um, impacted the process from your perspective? And also another question that's come in is how have you seen the process change since 2008, 2009, with the recession? I would think more regulations in place, more hurdles to jump. Well, what, what happened is, is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau came in and changed the whole format of, of how closings were handled uh, and the lender documentation. And so that, that kind of created a whole new set of obstacles or, or at least issues we had to deal with. Uh, it's funny, though, uh, one of the big goals that they had was let's let the buyer who's going to be borrowing the money know how much money they need to come up with at closing three days before closing, because we typically, before that crisis, we would not know the figure until the day of closing, usually. And Keith will remember that all the time. I do. So we have this new law that says uh, three days before, we're going to tell you how much you need to close. So we, we would have thought that three days before, that means you're good to close. That means we've gone through underwriting and everything's good and three days from now you can have your loan papers and you can close. That's not what the law did. The law forgot to say you're going to be cleared to close when we get that final documentation out, how much money you need to bring to closing. So we'll still get to closing. We'll get the, the, the it's called a CD, that we'll get the figure on Monday. We're going to now close on Thursday. And Thursday morning, we're still waiting for loan papers because they're not cleared to close. Go figure. <laughs> so, um, throw, so one of the things we try to do in the show, even though we didn't necessarily use an ac acronym, but you know, some of the folks that are watching may not really understand what the term underwriting means. Um, sure. and, and that may be a good explanation to jump into it, and one of the notes that I just made, um, s some of the conversations Yona and I have with um, buyers in particular is the, the conversation about title, right? Owner's title mm -hmm. versus the bank's title. So I think, you know, somewhere along that, I'd like to have a discussion particularly about that title, owner's title, and how important it is for, um, um, in my opinion, for the owners to also do that. So I was just wondering if Bill had some thoughts on... Want to talk about title insurance? Yeah. I got yeah. a lot of thoughts about Please. title okay, insurance. Okay, so show's over. <laughs> <laughs> Especially gives, given one of the sponsors is Charlottesville Settlement that, Company. There you go. Who produces title insurance. So, so what happens is um, the lender making a loan wants to make sure that they're going to have a good lien against the real estate. So they insist that the uh, buyer go and have somebody search the records in the appropriate clerk's office to see who owns the property, what liens are against it, that the current seller may have a mortgage or may have a home equity loan, what easements are there, what, what, what affects this property. Because the lender is going to loan money on that property. Well, they want to make sure that what they're loaning money on is a good deal. They get it appraised. Uh, but they also want to get title insurance. Uh, and, and so that's what, for example, Charlottesville Settlement does. Well, when you get title insurance, the title insurance company is saying to the lender, 
you have a good first lien against the property, and here are all the uh, potential exceptions to the title. Uh, the, there's, a drive, there's a joint maintenance agreement for a driveway. There's an easement for the power company to have power. So, so those are the things the lender wants to know. Well, the buyer needs to know that too, the owner. So that's what owner's title insurance is. The lender requires what's called mortgagee title insurance. We typically insist that our buyers get owner's title insurance. It, matter of fact, we have a form. If they elect not to get it, we, we have a big form. They sign saying, I've elected not to get it, and I realize I'm an idiot. Now, yeah, why wouldn't really they that. do that? <laughs> but why wouldn't they do that? Is it just to save a couple I just want to let you know, he save doesn't say that at the table. Well, right, right. <laughs> I, but we know what he's saying. It's to save a couple bucks? Yeah, that's all. I mean, you're stepping over, you're stepping over dollars to pick up nickels in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. So the owner's title generally is a couple, three hundred bucks, maybe yeah. four hundred bucks, somewhere in that. A good range. rule of thumb is like a dollar, a thousand more. So if you're buying something for three hundred thousand, it may be three hundred dollars more, and it's a one-time fee. Right. Well, that's what I, and that's what I wanted to talk about. It's it's probably the best insurance policy you'll ever buy for three hundred or whatever the dollar amount is. And Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, because they're they're the the purpose of the owner's title insurance is there may be something that doesn't really affect the lender, but it may affect you, right? Oh. I don't know, you know, Bill can elaborate on what that might be, but the purpose of this owner's title, because at the end of the day, the, the title insurance protects the bank, doesn't protect you, correct? Mm -hmm. And the owner's title protects you. So if there's some item, and, and Bill will give us an example, I'm sure, that isn't covered by the bank, you may be on the hook for it. This insurance covers that. And then um, it's transferable, correct? It stays with the No. Bank. It is not. There you go. But a new buyer can get a discount. So, so, for example, the lender's policy, what the bank requires, when you pay off that loan, that policy goes away. Oh. When you have an owner's policy, it lasts forever. It's a one-time fee. It lasts forever. So let's give it a man. Give a hypothetical. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm getting ready to sell property. I have an owner's policy. Uh, the title company for the new buyer does a title search, and they find, found something that got missed in the, in the prior title search. <clears throat> and, and that happens a lot because title companies are supposed to do a 40-year or a 60-year search. But mainly, if you think about it, every property, I'm sure, which you bought had previous title insurance. So they don't go back 40 years. They just go from that prior policy and search forward. So if there's a mistake that happened 10 years ago, that mistake might not be found until you're getting ready to sell your property. If you have owner's title insurance that didn't find that mistake, you're protected and you can move forward and sell without fixing that mistake. Interesting. Uh, so, so, the, the so mistake now you know why like I asked him to sit here. Mistake is like an old deed of trust. Yeah, uh, what are some other <coughs> mistakes? Oh, with a, the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the big one is a, a lender who didn't release their mortgage, they've been paid off, the loan, let's say, is 1980. It's a 30-year loan. The loan is good for 10 years after that 30 years. So 1980, 30 years is 210. It's not going to go away till 200, 2030. Uh, that bank's out of business. That seller was two sellers ago. It's no way to figure out how you can track down getting that lien released of record. Well, we know it's paid off. Walk me through that. Okay, so 1980, start on a 30. It's done at 2010, like you said. At yeah. 2010, after 30, uh, was it 900 payments? Mm -hmm. What happens at the you're, 901 yeah. payment? Well, you're, when you pay the loan off, there's a document that the bank is supposed to record called a certificate of satisfaction. It doesn't get recorded. The bank sends it to the wrong clerk's office. The bank makes a mistake. It, that happens. Um, uh, all the time. It happens all the time. I mean, we, my, my firm deals a lot with unreleased, we call them unreleased deeds of trust. We're kind of known as the people to go to. Uh, we probably inherit from other people, not our closings, four or five a month where there's an unreleased deed of trust and we've now got to go fix it. Uh, and the bank's out of business. The seller's no longer around. You know, that, that 1980 loan got paid off in 1990 when that seller sold the property. So the, 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 
uh, we literally have a situation that we're about he hasn't seen yet <laughs> that we're going uh -oh. yeah, <laughs> to have to deal with. And I know this because I've done a little bit of homework. The D got recorded in the wrong county. And mm -hmm. we're selling it. And how it got recorded in the other county, God only knows. Human error? Um, uh, well, Probably. I, I would assume so. Um, so are, are the other deeds in that recorded, other chain deeds? That I can't tell you. That's why, oh, well, we, that's why we're going to have to talk after yep. the show. <laughs> well, it, it, it can be fixed. Yeah. yeah. And that's the point. So to go by, you know, to talk about demystification and team members, and that's where you bring in somebody like Bill, you know, that's his, and his team, which are um, experts at this stuff. So I, I apologize. I interrupted you, Bill. I'll let you No, no, your again, no, th those are the big ones we get with unreleased deeds of trust that you just can't track down. The, the right bank to get that certificate of satisfaction recorded in 2019 when the loan was paid off in 1990. Man. Yeah. And I can see that happening all the time because the loan is transferred and sold to a bunch of different lenders. Yep. And on top of that, lenders, like you said, go out of business all the time. Yep. Um, I'm dealing, I'm going through that now. That's the end of the second sizzle reel right there. This portion of the program, thanks to Roy Wheeler Realty Company and mm -hmm. Michael Guthrie's team. Yeah, so, um, you know, Michael's a, 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 a rock star, and like you said, that's what we try to surround ourselves with, and it's great. And actually, I'll, I'll do a little plug for next week's show. Uh, Michael will join us, and we're going to bring in a couple other brokers, nice. and we're going to do a roundtable about uh, the new car report that hopefully will be out this week. Next Friday, 1015, Real Talk, and Insider's Guide to Real Estate in Central Virginia. Welcome Kelly Dye, the banker from First Citizens. He's watching right now. Real estate agent Will Nafei is watching right now. He specializes in commercial. Um, let me throw this to you. Rachel Burns, hello. Thank hey, you for Rachel. joining us. What's up, Rachel? <laughs> um, I'll throw this to you here. Um, you mentioned easements. Mm -hmm. uh, and how they can impact things. Here's a, a perfect example, okay? I got a buddy who just bought um, about 100 acres mm -hmm. in Albemarle County, okay? Um, he has got a property, basically it was a, a bunch of land that was subdivided, and there's one driveway point to two parcels. Mm -hmm. And this one particular driveway, one plot of land is not developed yet. It's just a guy that's sitting on it, land banking it. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, he bought this house um, and the land. So right now he has the, he's the only one using the driveway. Right. But eventually when the other guy chooses to go from land banking to putting something on there, like mm -hmm. his dream home, he doesn't even live in the area. It's a wealthy right. hedge fund guy. Yeah. Um, he is then going to say, I want access to this driveway. I want to be able to do things here with this property because that's how he's going to get to his home. Mm -hmm. Throw this topic to you <laughs> because this was something that almost kiboshed the deal. Mm -hmm. This driveway and this shared ac uh, access. How have you seen this impact deals that you've done? Well, what's, what's happened is lenders want, require not the contract itself, the VAR contract, the one you everybody signs, requires that there's a recorded easement for a right-of-way to get access to the property. So when your, your, your friend's problem, it might have come up in the title search that there wasn't a recorded right-of-way that was, that was actually granted uh, in a separate document. Uh, so that you would need to go in and, and negotiate that if you're the seller in order for the buyer to meet the conditions in the contract that the buyer's expecting. But what the lenders have now done is they've also said, and this is a 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they said, we want to make sure if you're not on a state road that that access to the property, that driveway, that somebody's going to maintain it. So mm -hmm. we're requiring a road maintenance agreement. So that's what we, we discover a lot, that there are these recorded easements Has this to get to already? the property. Yeah. It's really? Close. Yeah. So a road, uh, road easement agreement would mean that the seller, the buyer of property on the right, and the land bank owner have some kind of agreement in place of what's going to happen with that driveway moving forward in perpetuity? Right. It, it, the road maintenance agreement does that. Okay. The, the easement, it just grants you a right to use that strip of land. So there's, it's two separate documents, right? right? exactly. The document. contract requires the recorded easement. Correct. The contract doesn't require a road maintenance agreement, but mm. the lender may require that. So your friend has two issues. Issue yeah. one is easement, which is access, mm -hmm. right? And I'm... I'm did he buy, did, do you know by any chance, did he buy this in cash or did he have a lender? Uh, he, no, he was cash buy. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, yeah this guy's sitting on bank. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably why that never got caught, yeah. right? Because it didn't go through the yeah. normal lender, yes. 
lender process uh, on it. So uh, we uh, we should off air give me his name because we need to connect him with Bill because well it's all set it's done it's fi they yeah. they fixed it's it. it's all done oh they fixed yeah, it yeah everything's oh, okay. good got it yeah got everything's it. Okay. good uh, Remax Advantage and Stanton says hey guys happy Friday I'm loving the show <laughs> hey. um, I want to throw that to you how about the uh, you know the cash deals versus the deals that involve a lender and how the process when you're coming to the table with a bag of cash versus you're coming to the table needing a 10, a 15, a 20, a 30, whatever it may be, how that impacts things. You know, the, the, the cash buyer is still gonna go through the same due diligence that the lender is, is gonna, the lender just adds more obstacles to financially uh, qualify for the loan. Uh, they, but the due diligence, is, is their title good to the property? Uh, um, is the, the deed conveying the property correct? Uh, the, all those things are still the same. Uh, we, we, we'll give you an example. We give about an hour slots to do a closing. That means they come into our office to sign the papers for the closing. Well, if, when you've got a lender, you may sign 30 papers. When you're a cash buyer, you may only sign three or four. That same hour, we have a lot for both closings because typically the cash buyer may have more questions than the buyer getting a loan. And it depends on how it gets to build too. You know, something that Yona and I are doing now on most of our cash transactions, we're also, you know, we're suggesting to our buyers to negotiate in the deal that they get appraisals. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, we want to make sure that the value is really there. We do our CMA and our market research, but, um, you know, and, and pretty much, I think all the cash deals we're dealing with right now, that's what we're suggesting our buyers and are taking our advice. And it's working out okay because we're making sure that they're buying out what we believe is the market and the appraisers are matching it. But, um, you know, that's something that the process really isn't that different. Maybe a little shorter. But How about this? And we're getting this question coming in about the Internet. Uh, we touched on this briefly. And how is the Internet? We're seeing the Internet with, like, the rocket mortgages mm -hmm. um, and trying to streamline things. The reality is that it seems to make it more complicated. I would rather have this on a 30-year yep. deal than this mm -hmm. on a 30-year deal. Is it impacting your business well, with settlements and closing? When, when we first started uh, seeing Internet lenders, uh -huh. I, I was always weary of them because you – you didn't know what you were getting. You know, now that there's some of more established ones, it's okay. But I always preach, get a local lender, because just like what you just said, Jerry, we can sit down and talk. If there's a problem, I can come to your office and talk about it. If you're an internet lender, you're gonna go, as you say, on the computer, and you may not get the same person. Right. And, and so I've seen lots of problems that way. And, and Keith, that's a great suggestion, that appraisal contingency in the yeah. contracts. I think, we've, I think he even did, I have a weekly, mostly, a, usually a weekly blog called, called Tucker's Tips. Mm -hmm. And one of the tips uh, with the last couple of months was put that appraisal contingency in the contract. So um, if We I should feature Tucker's Tips on the show. Yeah, sure. We could totally do that. I was going to lie and said I read that and got the idea yeah. from it, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this on how sometimes the appraisal, and I think you went through this, how the appraisal may not reflect the um, purchase price and how that could potentially make a deal a little hairy in the bottom of the ninth. Well, it, if you write the deal right, it won't be at the bottom of the ninth, right? Okay. It'll, it'll be long before you're at the closing table that you realize that the appraised value doesn't match the contract value, and then you have to renegotiate or terminate or whatever at that particular point. So it's funny, I made a couple of notes, and one of the things that you were, we were talking earlier about what's really changed since 2008 and since what I referred to mm -hmm. it as the great real estate depression, not recession, um, because I got caught up in it, I guess it's a depression. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, the, the, real, the appraisal process has drastically changed. Yep. Would you agree, Bill? Oh, absolutely. And um, so it used to be prior to that, you know, each lender had its kind of go-to appraisers. The regulators have switched it primarily to a pool system. And, you know, what happens, I think we had this conversation once before, we helped our daughter... Um, buy a house up in Norwalk, Connecticut, and uh, she, her husband decided to use a different lender who was a large national firm, 
online, exactly mm -hmm. like Bill was saying. They ended up bringing an appraiser in that was from like 50 miles from outside the area. Came in, it was a half a million dollar house, came in $50,000 under. So then I went to my daughter and my son-in-law so now you're going to listen to me and use a local lender use a local yep. closing and it came back 50,000 above there was a hundred thousand dollar delta yeah. between appraiser a and appraiser appraiser b excuse me guys i thought i showed off my hearing aids no. <laughs> um, um the uh for those that know i got hearing aids in and my phone rings in my hearing aids so um so so anyway that has been the big change and, and the struggle from on our end of it, and it, Bill has to deal with it quite regularly on his end, is sometimes the appraisals just come from these different areas and we have to sit down and, and kind of get this to where it needs to be. And if you're on an internet lead, you don't know, you don't have a bill to sit across the table, or you don't have a Mike Bittrick who's- sure. who is, you First know, Heritage Mortgage. First Heritage Mortgage on the other side, and Keith and Yoner, and we sit around a table and say, okay, how are we gonna fix this? Um, it, it ends up, they tend to fall apart when you don't have that personal connection. I don't know if Bill would agree with me on that. Uh, but. No, you're right, but I, I wanted to get back to the internet question. No, oh, sorry. Because this is something that, that's very topical. It's still going on. It's, it's, it's called it wire fraud. And, and this is a sizzle reel, Harris. Third sizzle reel. Yeah. And, and I mean, just yesterday, we, we, we've also handled several internet fraud cases my firm and just yesterday we got a call I guess because they know we do this uh, someone's getting ready to do a closing they're getting ready to buy property they've been working with an attorney or a settlement company like Charlottesville settlement in this case it wasn't Charlottesville settlement thank God uh, and they're, they're they know they're gonna have to wire money to the settlement company to buy their property well they're gonna get the instructions the day of closing from this particular settlement company of how much to wire and where to wire it. The night before, they get an email claiming it's the settlement company saying, you need to wire the money here. So the next morning at nine o'clock in the morning, they're at the bank wiring money. Then they notice an, another email from the settlement company. Uh -huh. now, now what the fraud is, is, is the, the hackers kind of I don't know what it's called, but they sort of hover over the screen and look at what's the transaction. They spoofed that's going it. On. Spoof, yeah. Yeah. And so they then pretend they're the settlement. They got company. two wire requests. Well, they they intercede and they pretend they're the, you know it's a different. If you look at the email address, is one digit different or something? But anyway, so 901, they're wiring. I think it was thirty five thousand dollars life savings to buy the property. Uh, at 9.30, they get the wire, the real information from the settlement company saying you need to wire a different amount, but kind of close, to this wiring instructions. Well, they don't bother to look at it till later in the day because they just figured it's just a confirmation of the earlier wire, or earlier email. And about 12 o'clock in the, that morning, they're getting ready to go to closing, and they say, where's our money, the settlement company? And they now look at the email and realize, whoops, we sent it to the wrong place. So they're dealing with their out-of-state bank, trying to get recover the wire. They're dealing with a, a big name bank who got the fraudulent wire. Uh, Who's on the hook there? You know, it, 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 probably in this case, the, the customer. Really? Yeah, because I suspect the hacking happened is to get a Gmail account. Most, you know, like our account's real secure. secure. Yeah. Uh, and the lender is real secure, and the realtors are now getting real secure. So it's probably the, the Gmail account that the, lend, that, the bar, that the client had, the customer buying the property. Uh, and uh, they're, That's they're, terrifying. Yeah, but I think, I think they got it caught in time that, well, the fraud department in Wells Fargo, so I'm not mentioning the name, but they didn't do anything wrong. They just got the wire. Uh, they may have captured it before they sent it out. But these poor people, you know, could lose their life savings and not be able to buy the house. Sure. The trick is, the, the, what you do is you want to make sure those wiring instructions are accurate. 
So, so the, the settlement company, this particular settlement company, and all of its emails, we will not, uh, you know, you got to be sure the wiring instructions are correct. Big, bold print. Everybody does it. But, you know, you get an email, and you think, oh, that's the, the email I'm expecting. Sure, I'll just send the money. And everybody's excited. To. We're trying to close. Yeah. Not thinking clearly. You know, yeah. and, and, and that's why, you know, repetitively, I'll keep on saying this, it's so important to get trusted advisors at the table. Yeah, so right. what we do, so to make sure, because knock on wood or whatever this for my Yeah, guy. this is Ikea. <laughs> uh, what we do is, is we make sure that when, when we give out our wiring instructions, if we don't give it across the table to, to you, uh, we, we're going to send it to you early in the process. We're not going to do it at the end. Uh, so you've gotten our wiring instructions three weeks before closing. Before you wire the money, we're going to require you to pick up the phone and call us. And w you're going to read out over the phone the wiring information, and one of my paralegals is going to verify it. And in the same way, if we're wiring money to you, you sold property and we're wiring it to you, uh, we're going to call you before we wire the money and have you confirm that we're sending it to the right place. So, th th you know, there's ways to avoid it, but it, it just is still happening, and that's the Internet. So diligence and due diligence and redo diligence. Smart people. Well, maybe smart people. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, that's the end of the Internet sizzle reel. Start with my question to Bill all the way through that answer. Um, Keith, this portion of the program, thanks to First Heritage Mortgage, yeah. Mike Bittrick and his team. So, yeah, so to, to kind of expand on what, what Bill just said, somebody like local, yeah, Mike and his team will coordinate with our team and, and Bill's team and the buyer and make sure that all this data is right because of this very reason. So, you know, it, it's, um, I just uh, came from a conference, we were talking about um, millennials in the, in the buying space and how they're gonna be the number one buyers outperforming boomers and Gen X's and so forth and so on. And, and I think we talked about this before, but the takeaway point on that is, is they'll, they'll do all the stuff on the, this right here, mm -hmm. but it'll get to a point and then they're gonna want trusted advisors. It's like clockwork. They get to that point and they put this phone down, they put the internet down, they put the thing down and they say, okay, tell me how to do this because it's, they've realized it becomes so overwhelming and so detailed that they need somebody like this team to go ahead and walk them through it. And, and you know, each one's different, right, Bill? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, some have the basic stuff. I, I just put a note down, you know, before, I know we're getting a little close. No, to we it. got plenty of time. Okay, got yeah. it. Um, how's business? Is increasing, decreasing? How, how are you, because, you know, if you're, if you're doing a lot of transactions. <laughs> He's a barometer of the economy, the real estate market. Well, his business. it's a little lagging. It's a lagging yeah. indicator, because by the time you get it, We'll get it a couple of weeks after you've signed the contract. We'd yeah. like to get it the day after you signed it. Yes. Uh, but, but, yeah, in our end, our, our numbers are up. We, That's awesome. We're, we're, we're probably doing 15 to 20% more than we Than did. last year. Yeah. And we track it month to month. And, you know, uh, like last month. You're saying 2019, the first six months, Q1 and Q2 well, are Q, 15. Q2 has, has helped a lot. 15 to 20% more. That's it, it, from our volume of business. Now, now you got to remember, people will come to me because they want to, now I'm not bragging or anything, but just because they want to get it done. So I may get a disproportionate number. Uh, and, and I still do a lot of, you know, I go to first time, I, I do a first time home buyer seminar monthly with Piedmont Housing and do other seminars. So I may be getting a disproportionate amount of the work. You used to sit on the board of. Yeah. But, but anyway, what, 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 give you an example. Last month, the last year for June, we opened 150 some files. This year it was 206. So, Welcome uh, Jessica Russo <laughs> from the Russo team. She's watching now. Hey, Jessica. Royalty. Um, let me throw, do you think, we talk about this, you're seeing a correction on the horizon. I mean, we've had some really good times here, Bill. Mm -hmm. I, you know, entrepreneur, 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 little concern, we have a correction on the horizon. My position, I'm trying to go deep cash 
as a result and see if I can use that as an opportunity when the correction does happen. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts on that? Well, I, I, think, I think we're all worried about that. Uh, I, I kind of agree. Keith, you're shaking your head. Yeah, he's saying no. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I don't. Let's hear this. But, yeah, I don't. But, but you know what? Real estate in Charlottesville has always been a little insulated. Yeah, because and, of the university. Yeah, and, and like in when 2007 happened, in 2008, I got. I don't think my volume business went down. Well, it pivoted a little bit to a different yeah, product. Yeah, well, but but it also you wouldn't just if you're if somebody came to you and they said I want to use so and so that's only done ten closings a year. You're going to say no. You got to go to somebody who That's knows exactly what they're right. doing. That's exactly uh, right. and, and then what I think Keith's talking about is we took on and became the short sale magnet of Charlottesville. <laughs> Which of, thank the Lord is handled about 1,100 short sales. You pivoted your model. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Well, I so, just, it was so fun. I you know to talk a little bit about that and not, and, and you know I don't want to throw negative vibes out, but just to to talk about his his team skill sets. Um, we did several short sale transactions together, and I think we've closed every single one of them, right? We, we close about 92% yeah, of our short sales. which is unusual. Yeah. Usually they go to foreclosure long before they get to, to that point. You know, so we'll talk about the market in depth next, okay. next week, yeah. but I just read an article um, written by the, um, and I'll paraphrase it a little bit, but written by the National Association's um, Mr. Yoon, uh, chief economic economist, excuse me. And, you know, it, it, and he boiled it down to this. You know, at the moment, you know, interest rates are super low. Yep. Um, unemployment is, in our marketplace, under 3%. Very of it, healthy. Right? Yeah. So full, full employment, depending on how you talk to, is anywhere between... Four and six percent, right? So we're under we're under that. So we're going to full employment. It's not uh, incomes or or pays not increasing in in dramatically, but it's increasing enough, and our population's growing. And the real struggle with the market is inventory. My, that's exactly right. Yeah, we have no inventory. That's the problem. So you have the buyer buyer money is cheap, right? Our, we talked about this before, 1988, my first house, I paid 18% interest, and I was happy to get it, <laughs> you know? I was doing the dance of joy, 18%, you know? So, you know, I, I think, the big, personally, I think, and this is because I'm a developer, builder, you And know, you're a positive guy. Yeah, you know, you have to be if yeah. you're in that line of work. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it's inventory, increasing inventory, increasing inventory, and we talked a few minutes ago how how... I was able to do a project in six months. Now one got to rezoning in four years. That's the struggle and how we recon reconcile that so we can increase inventory, yeah. not necessarily new in construction, but inventory in general for folks to buy. That, that's the struggle. And rents are going through the freaking roof. Right, which right? I love. Yeah. I love that. Well, we you have, know that because you, you're a well, we landlord. Well, we have <laughs> another barometer to echo what you're saying, and then I want to throw it to him. I'm curious of his perspective here. 24... Um, rentals, 100% occupancy, 4.75% mm -hmm. increase every year. And no one's having a problem with that. Why your hesitation, though? Because I, you, I learn from you guys so much. I love, this is my favorite show. No, no BS. Because I'm passionate about this and I'm learning here. I thought it was from my dynamic personality. <laughs> That's his hair. This portion of the program my has hair a hair spit and go. Look at this man's hair. I mean, he's flawless over here, isn't he? Uh, give a little props to Hair yeah, Smith I mean, and Company. Yeah, I think he just did. My sister does my hair. <laughs> On Market Street, <laughs> Hair go. Smith and Company. I, I'm, I'm curious of why you have... Bill, I'll give you her number in case you want it. <laughs> you, you know, I, I just think that we're going to see a bump eventually in interest rates. I, I, again, I don't think it's going to slow up at least my part of the business and, mm. and Charlottesville Settlement's part of the business. But the economy in totality. Yeah, but, but I, I echo Keith's problem with, with developing an, an inventory. I, I own a, a piece of property uh, up at Forest Lakes behind the little shopping center there, uh, and we've been trying to get, a, I think it's only 34 townhouse approved by the county. Four years. We're in our sixth year. Sure. Four years? Sure. Oh, no, you're in year, he's in year years. number six. Good night. It's just crazy what yeah. they, the hoops there make us jump through. We've had to resubmit 
the damn site. No, it's fine. The, the, no the, FCC the here. Site. No FCC. You can <laughs> yeah. say whatever you yeah, want. You could totally say that. Uh, we can even talk a little bit in Yiddish, and nobody will know. What I we're would totally about. say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Six yeah. years. Oh, he's crazy. Why? Uh, you know, they, they, the, 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 oh, I, I don't, I don't even want to. Just everything is an issue. Well, you're in this commercial HOA. You got to be in the residential HOA. Just everything was an obstacle. So. You know, usually these obstacles are put together, put up. So to go back to the appraisal question, right? So the regulators, you know, really, in my opinion, fell asleep at the switch in 06 and 07, right? And then unfortunately, they went the opposite direction, right? They went too restrictive on, on stuff. So, you know, regulations are there for a reason. I get that. Um, and, you know, it's just... Some of them are just a little bit too far to whichever side you want to be on um, to, to get it to get it done. And the political process is a little bit longer, and there's much more acronyms in the business, right? Uh, you know, you have multiple agencies you need to go through, and sometimes Agency A doesn't talk to Agency B. But you know, but this is not this struggle is not exclusive to the private folks, mm -hmm. right? It took me four years to get an affordable housing project off the ground. And, you know, but there was, we needed to go through FEMA, we needed to get money, you know, you know, there's many multiple layers to, to get there. Um, but in order, in my opinion, in order to work our way through that, we need to walk that back a little bit. Maybe not six months, maybe not six years, but there has to be some sort of reasonable thing. And the struggle that the bill's going to have on this project that's six Six years into I can't it, even imagine that. Six years, it's crazy. Oh my so God. We, we've had it's the antithesis we, of being an entrepreneur. We have our development loan. We closed a year ago, thinking we were going to get approved. Oh my time. God! So you're paying interest on a development. Oh, yeah, good we, lord! We didn't haven't drawn down much of it, fortunately. But it cost you to close it. That I know. Yeah. Well, you know a good lawyer. Yeah. So, but but the th the thing about that is, Bill wrote and his team. I'm I'm, I'm assuming six years ago a business plan. This is what the, based on what they projected that market to a be. A perfect example of this, I don't mean to interrupt you, is Keith Woodard on West 2nd Street. Sure. He walked away from $1.2 million on the project that he was doing on, on Water Street. And he basically said, this is too hard. The market conditions have mm -hmm. changed. I'm going to peace out of here because now I have to do completely different development than what I was doing yeah. before. So, so the problem, the struggle I see with that is it, it impedes a local guy, Bill, Mm -hmm. who's trying to do a local project. In order to do these projects now, you have to have really deep pockets. Yeah. And you have to be able to walk away from a million bucks. Now, Keith's a local guy, but, you know, so my concern is, is if we don't come to some sort of happy medium here, you're only going to see big guys with big pockets mm -hmm. uh, either doing these or not doing it. And regardless of it, we're not solving the problem, right? We're not putting affordable housing units on. You know, Bill's project, um, I don't know what the price points are going to be, but I probably fall well, into... Well, they're going up. The, yeah, yeah, they have to. Yeah. And, well, it's an example with the land trust, right? Yeah. I'll hold, we wanted to release these units at 199 We got held up a little bit. We, we go to, 215 We're at 215 now. Yeah. And that $15,000 is directly related to our construction loan costs. Mm -hmm. Right, we had to renew our loan because it took longer than what we were hoping to do it, and we, ha you know, this is something as a land trust and a nonprofit we can't absorb, so we're we're passing it along, unfortunately, to the buyer. But I wanted to release these at one ninety nine, which would have been really yeah. rake, oh, rock star. I mean, especially they, in the city, you, they you would have sold them in a day. Well, we <laughs> he still pretty pretty much sold them in a day, right? Well, <laughs> Greg Slater yeah. is is running point on that, who's yeah. our chair. But just to put a little bow around it, they have solar on those, Bill. They mm -hmm. will have um, near zero utility costs. Oh, neat. Right? Good for you. For 215 That's awesome. Pretty we're, freaking awesome. We're going solar. We decided to go solar in our house. And the guy said, you got to put it on the, you got to put it on the front of your house. My wife said, that's a badge of honor. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what did you say? So who you, who you said, all right, happy hey, wife, happy, happy life. Exactly. <laughs> May I ask who you're using? No, yeah, excuse me? Who you're using? Uh, Segura? It's, it, no, it, I ended up... Suntry? No, out of the area, but, but it, they do work here. I can't are you remember gonna, the name of it. Somebody gonna, my daughter knew that sent to it. us and actually ended up being the cheapest. So and, we're doing the, it on our house also? You um, are? Yeah, um, and you're going to obviously capture the 
the tax incentive, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and the trick is, are you financing yours? I am. Don't do it if you can avoid it. Okay. So it's, then write me a check, Bill. It, no. Well, I, I you know, I <laughs> said. Oh, he's stunning. I might get one. <laughs> Literally, you know, that, they had that yeah. like 3% financing, nothing yeah. for a year or whatever yeah. the deals are. If you don't take that financing, I think our number dropped 30 some percent. Yeah. So I'm rolling in a new roof mm -hmm. on it. Um, Good for you. Yeah, so my, I'll actually walk away. Um, so I'll have a fixed electrical cost on a 3,600 square foot house mm -hmm. for 20 years for $150. No, I'm sorry, I apologize. $200 a yeah. month. So yeah. that's how they're doing it. Yeah. So they're rolling in. So it's not, I'm not actually financing. And the really neat thing about it, it's transferable. So mm -hmm. if you come by my house. I was yeah. going to say, you I, just made your property even more appealing. That's exactly right. That's yeah. smart. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, that's, that's two I, times you called me smart. That is smart, show. dude. Because I'm learning yeah. from you. I think I need to go home. We're done, <laughs> we're done for the day. I got two smarts. Um, I got. I want to learn here on this topic here, and we're going to go. Um, we'll, we'll go about seven or eight more minutes. Yeah, because no I got a twelve o'clock. Okay. No, okay. Bill's got okay. a busy day. I, commercial versus residential, and the closing and settlement process. Oh well, night and day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna start open ended. Did you say you have seven minutes left? <laughs> I just want to <laughs> learn here. Oh well. You know, a, a, com a residential deal, there's sort of steps you're going to know is going to follow. Uh -huh. uh, with, with the uh, commercial deal, it, it can just be amazing the different uh, issues you have to deal with. Uh, the, the, the lender wants a different survey than the normal home residential survey. The, the t title of insurance underwriting, in other words, meeting the lender's requirements for the title uh, just is a whole different animal. Plus, you end up dealing with the lender, the bank's attorney, oh, yeah. and all the documentation. And typically, you'll pay the bank's attorney more than you'll pay your own attorney. So, you, so I've done enough of this in my career. You've done a couple of commercial transactions, right? Six. You act, yeah, so you end up paying both attorneys. Yeah, oh, the yeah. Buyer. And I think what Bill's trying to say, you know, in a residential closing, you know, even we've just spent some time talking about how complicated it is, but there's a very clear roadmap yes. to it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, commercial deals, each one is very different. Uh, they're extremely expensive from 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 the, from the closing perspective. Um, you know, we, we you know just to talk about what we did for the land trust because we got commercial money to go vertical with that, you know. And we were working with a couple um, attorneys that gave us substantial discounts uh, for it. And I think we paid like fifteen grand in closing costs mm. for eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollar loan. That's just the attorney. Excuse me. I think that was just the attorney fees. If Christine Jacobs is watching, she'll probably that's substantial. Correct me. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it's just you just roll it into your performer. You know? Sure. You just need to make sure the numbers are there. Anything you want to add to that? Well, no, I can just tell you it's very complicated. I, I did one that I did gratis for the senior center on their new building. Oh, yeah, sure. I closed that construction loan. You're on that board too, right? Yeah. Uh, that He doesn't like to talk the, about the, all this the stuff. Le he does. Yeah. The legal fees that we wrote off on that's a simple construction loan closing. The lender wanted to make the loan. Everybody wanted to do the deal. And again, we already own the property, so it was just a construction loan. The the, the legal fees were over twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, sure. My, you know, fortunately, the bank's fees were not that much. Well, because it's but, for who it was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But but it, you know, it's just I, I cringe. With, with, I don't want to do more than one a month because I want to have some time to relax. The commercial deals. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I know this is about Bill and all that stuff, but in you know, commercial deals, you really, with all due respect to Bill, you probably got need to focus to somebody that that's all they do because the brain damage on it is. I use Jim yeah. Cox a lot. Yeah. Jim, Jim's good at that, but yeah. he's mainly the bank's counsel. Yeah. If you're using a union. Yeah. No, I'm using uh, Jim and Mickey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but he, he, I think you were referring. Jim, Jim represents, he's bank's counsel yeah. for, for one of the banks. So yeah. I'll. If I'm doing a loan with, I, with I think, think we just went from dis, demystifying to well, complicating. I mean, that's why I was asking. <laughs> yeah. no, Jim, Jim's, a good, Jim's a good attorney. Yeah, yeah it's it's a it's a whole different animal, a whole different world. You um, are a fascinating human being. Are you, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. <laughs> 
So we so we have a thing. We do a sock cam every once in a while. Yeah. You guys should do a, a sandal cam. <laughs> sandal cam. I like it. What kind of sandals are, are those, girl? These are buffalo sandals. These are originally you call them Jesus sandals. Yeah, they, I was going to say, those are yeah. Jesus sandals. Can we get those somehow on air, Harris? How can we get that? Okay, there we go. <laughs> there you there go. go, Harris. <laughs> buffalo sandals. I like. They look comfortable. Oh, they're great. Yeah. You can get them online, this 20, the, 25 bucks. This is the new version of the buffalo <laughs> sandal here. It's go. the rainbow. <laughs> so, so did I hear, did, did you call them Jesus sandals? Well, that's what, that's what us Jewish people call them. Uh, I was about to say, coming from, that's coming from a Jew. So. Jewish people call them. This is a worn one. Yeah, mine get like that too. Yeah, little hole. You're pretty much walking on your bare feet over there, Bill. <laughs> you know. I, get, I don't think, I don't. It's great. I don't. Oh, I love Bill to death. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been at a closing with Bill that he wasn't wearing exactly what he has. I think actually he dressed up for a shirt. Well, well in the winter though, <laughs> I, I wear usually jeans and, and tennis shoes. I, I put the sandals away. <laughs> I love it. I You're love tough, it. but not that tough. Well, you know what I tell everybody? This is the way a well-dressed uh, real estate attorney should look because you want me relaxed. So <laughs> that's what I say to before my before we all jump the time. off. Um, he should tell one of his Janis Joplin stories. Okay. Well, no, it, it, key, I, 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 I happen to love Janice Joplin. She was here at UVA uh, back in the day, and I think it was a small venue she played in, Drunk as a Skunk. But, but anyway, I never went to Woodstock, but I wanted to go. My oh. wife, was, Ellie, was heading to Woodstock, and her, her, her Beetle van broke down. Volkswagen As it band. should. Sure. <laughs> so she never made it, thank God, or I maybe never would have met her. Uh, uh, but I loved Woodstock. And matter of fact, my, my wife was up at a, a Jewish choral uh, festival in the area in upstate New York, and uh, I uh, uh, wanted to go see Woodstock. It was about 20 miles away, and so we had two dogs with us, uh, two Australian uh, Aussie doodles, so they're Nice sized dogs. So I took them to Woodstock, and there's a, they wouldn't let me in with the dogs, but there's a place on, on the grounds where you can look out over the field where everything happened, and there's a, a, a memorial there that's got the logo and talks about who was there and stuff looking out over it. And so I, I said to the dogs, once the, the other people who happened to be around left, I said, you know what we have to do now, guys? They're both boys. I said, we got to go pee on the grass. <laughs> Because that was the thing at Woodstock. I told you this was going to be So the three of us all, all did our job. Uh, on cue, right? <laughs> on cue. Look at that. But I have a, I have a big uh, scarf that somebody at Woodstock took around and got signatures from 15 of the people. Like, we got Jimi Hendrix, and this is before he was famous. He wrote Be Groovy, Jimi Hendrix. Or Janis Joplin put a big heart over her signature, so it was kind of it's kind of a cool thing. Keith loves it every time he comes in. Yeah, that's cool stuff. That's a, I love this show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on fire. We should do it with him again. You're yeah, cool. yeah, have to, to, anytime. Yeah, yeah. you're so you got the gift of gab. You got the gift of experience. You put things in approachable uh, way. Well, thank you. You know, I really truly enjoy this. The other thing he and I tend to talk about. Well, because I'll call him on business. We somehow know that we diverge over to talk about who's got the best matzo ball soup or who's got the, the <laughs> exactly. you know, the, the decent. Charlottesville's never had it. What's wrong, Charlottesville? Well, they, they just opened well, they, up. On Wall Street, right? Yeah, yeah. I haven't had a chance There's to There's a go. Jewish deli there. Have you been there? Yeah, I've been there. Oh, no, no. That's your cup of tea? Yeah. Okay. No, it's not real Jewish deli. Okay. So, so, so I grew up in, an, in the half of In Brooklyn. Town. Well, so half the neighborhood was, well, we were multicultural, but the two biggest groups were Jew, Jewish folks mm -hmm. and Italian folks, and there really isn't that much difference. I grew up in a totally 100% Jewish neighborhood, Kings Mill and Williamsburg. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and I went to a Catholic school, was raised Southern Baptist, and grew up in a Jewish neighborhood. Good for you, man. And, and so matzo you, ball soup in my blood. Oh, yeah. My wife's from Long Island oh, as well. There you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> this has been a great show. We will archive the show in totality on ilovesevil.com. Um, the show is powered by the Yes Team. Um, the Yes Team Realtors, Keith and Jonas Smith. They are fantastic. Uh, we encourage you to follow them on Facebook. Give them a call. Shoot them an email. Bill Tucker of Charlottesville Settlement Company and Tucker Griffin Barnes. Thank you kindly for joining us on Real Talk, an insider's guide to real estate across Central Virginia, Fridays at 10.15 on the I Love Seville Network. Thanks, buddy. Good show. Good job. You crushed it. You crushed it. Good show. One more thing. We're going to get a photo real quick for everybody.